Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So I'm joined by a really special guest today, professional rugby league player and captain of Leeds Rhinos, Cruz Lehman. Oh, and Cruz Lehman goes in! joining me today mate. Not a problem, thanks for having me. So Cruz is going to take me through a typical fitness and wrestling session and then we're going to have a chat after. Let's go. We'll just go through uh, a couple of stretches. Let's just start by opening your hamstrings out. Oh he's stiff, he's, he's very stiff today. <laughs> you do a lot of stretching. Yeah we, we've got a stretch mate. Because yeah. Uh, and it's something that we do constantly, it's every day, so yeah. you stay, you stay supple, do you yeah. know what I mean? Last one and then we'll get into it, so it's just one. Bit of rhythm that don't have. <laughs> yeah. Is that right, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah we'll give you that. <laughs> give you, we'll give you that. Right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Cruz, thanks for joining me today, mate. So, to understand the man that you are today, you know, captain of Leeds Rhinos, you're at the pinnacle of your career. I want to get an understanding of what life was like growing up for you. How did you get to where you are today? Take me through from, you know, a day in the life of you growing up as a youngster, starting out playing rugby league. Talk, talk me through it. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, I appreciate it. As a youngster, I, I was born in Swaziland. Oh, yeah. um, I, w I wasn't born in this country, so um, the way my mum and dad met, this is going right back, is my dad finished army and he flipped a coin whether we were going to go to America or Africa, um, whatever it landed on, heads or tails, it, uh, he went to Africa. He went to Africa and um, he were, uh, my mum were a croupier on a, on a cruise ship that's dealing, if you want, it's like dealing cards in a casino on a cruise ship. Uh, my dad did the same thing, uh, they met. Uh, I was conceived on there and that's why I got my name Cruz uh, because obviously it was such a nice experience for them that they wanted to remember that. Yeah. Um, so that's how I got my name, that's the meaning behind my name. I come over, I was born in Swaziland uh, with my mum's family. Um, my mum's fully Swazi, uh, all her family are. My dad's fully British, but born in Siddle, uh, brought up in Siddle. So there's two contrasts there of... Um, of uh, the way that I got brought up and the culture around where I got brought up, uh, how I got brought up. My mum's culture is very hard-faced, um, African, you know, the, the value she has and, and that's the way she brought me up. My dad were obviously um, British and he had different ideas on how to bring me up, but it were, it were great, I got, I got the best of both. Uh, I come over here when I was three years old, um, started school, didn't know a word of English, knew more uh, Swazi than I did English. Um, so yeah, I went to school over here, uh, Siddle Primary School, uh, then went to Brooksbank High School, and that's where that's where I got into rugby really because it were a sports college and we played a lot of rugby there. I were a golfer growing up. Uh, I, I did a lot of golf. I love my golf now. I play a lot of golf. Um, I wish I'd have stuck at it actually because I'd have uh, been a professional golfer would have been easier than being a professional <laughs> rugby player, especially on my body. Um, but yeah, so the way I got into rugby, I, I used to golf a lot. My granddad were a big golfer. Um, I, uh, I used to go and practice down on the uh, Siddle rugby pitch. Um, and one day the groundsman come up to me and said, look, Cruz, you can't, you can't keep taking divots out of my, out of my <laughs> ground. And I says, oh, come on, uh, come on, mate. I were only, what, 11, 10, 11 at the time. I says, come on, like, this is how I practice. I used to try and hit ball through post. Um, and he like, all right, I'll do your deal. I says, all right, I says, um, you come down and, uh, and train for Siddle and sign on and I'll let you practice as much as you want. I thought, brilliant. So I, I went down at 11. I, I was late, really. In, in terms of rugby league, in terms of sport, um, to get into it at 11, 12, he's probably later than most of my mates did. They were playing it since they were six, seven, seven years old. So I went down, started, play, uh, started playing rugby, loved it, put my golf clubs away, never didn't play golf for five, six, seven years. Then after that, fell out with it. Um, I loved the team ethos and the changing rooms. And I've always been brought up with individual sports, me, uh, snooker, golf, badminton, tennis. I've always played them growing up from being a young age. Uh, my hand-eye coordination, um, that's what my dad and my granddad, um, the, male in, the males in my family wanted me to do and it were always, like I say, individual sports. 
Was your dad not a rugby league fan then? None of my family. No. None of my family played rugby, watched rugby. Well, it might have been, you know, obviously Siddle been such a yeah. big rugby league area. Yeah, I think my uncle played a couple of games, but he were a boxer, he were a good boxer. Boxing right. against another sport, individual I got brought up with. Um, and I think he just played so they could get into a fight. Right. He must have played four or five games, four or five fights, loved it, <laughs> and then sacked it off. So, yeah, it, were, it wasn't in my family rugby, and never, never got pushed to play it. And I loved the team ethos around it. I loved uh, the changing room. I, I loved the fact, because I, I, I did play football, and the difference between football and rugby growing up is after a game, you have a shower at rugby, you all eat together, uh, you're all, you know, you, you stay in club, you've got to stay for a certain amount of time, so it gets you... It gets you involved in club and enjoying it. Whereas football, it were almost you didn't even get a shower after the game. You went home and you kicked dirty. Mm. So it won't the, the team what, feeling around it. What, what age did you stop playing football then? I stopped playing football. Um, I think I ran along rugby for a couple of years. Um, I stopped playing football at 13, 14. Yeah, fair enough. And then just focused purely on rugby. Focused purely on rugby. Um, loved it. And I, as I was saying before, then I went to Brooksbank. Um, 11, 12, and we had such a successful rugby league team in, at Brooksbank. Uh, we won the National Cup three years on bounce. And every time we won it, we got the, the prize of winning it was you got put up in hotels in London, you played the final in London, and then you went to Wembley and watched the Challenge Cup final. And I can remember walking round um, the field parading because you paraded at half time. Obviously, the fans they were full. Challenge Cup, you watched your Saints there, Hull there, uh, Leeds. I, I watched three, three years on bounce and that's what... And I thought, well, it was weird because I did think when I walked around, I was like, I want to play here one day. I want to play here and win that Challenge Cup one day. Um, unfortunately enough, I did it. It wasn't last year the year before, was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it wasn't last year the year before. Um, it was surreal because the massive moment in my career and my life I'd been building up for for so long. Um, I finally got there and there were no crowd because of COVID. Oh, mom, no. My mum couldn't even come watch. Yeah. Um, but it had its perks as well. Like obviously that, that were a bit of a downer not having your family there and obviously they watched it on TV and it was still a massive a massive thing for, yeah. for me and, uh, and my family. But the perks of n normally the lads that had been there and won it before or played before, you get dragged, as soon as the game's done, you get dragged to do media over there, media there, you know, you, you're out of changing rooms, you've got to go, uh, you all get separated, you've all got different media duties, whereas, because of COVID, they weren't allowed to come into change rooms, so we actually got a chance to just sit in change rooms after winning, have, uh, have a beer together, enjoy it, yeah. talk about the season, the experience, so that were, uh, you know, um, a silver lining. Yeah, amazing, brilliant. Yeah, so what we're going to go through today, Tom, is um, it's a running session that I've done um, and it's something that I, I did three or four times a week during pre-season, helped me get fitter um, and it, I think they're a little bit of gold for me going, going forward into in games, made me change my body, my physique, I feel loads fitter, like I say, doing them and it's only something that I've found this year, um, I've not done them before and what it is, is it's classed as interval training, but we're going to run 5k essentially, but we're going to run it in 1k splits. So you'll run 1k, then you'll have one minute rest, no running, then another k, one minute rest, no running. Do that five times, it adds up to 5k. Sounds good. Shall we get into it? Let's go. Let's do it. Let's go. We'll, right, what we'll do is we'll start your first one and you try, try run it at, at my speed. So when that gets to a minute, when that gets to a minute, we'll go straight up to 17 and a half and then you run for a K. Right. Oh, fucking hell. Fight fit then, yeah? And they're off. <laughs> and they're off. Nice, nice. Easy this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know how hard these, uh, these efforts are. I'm glad I'm watching and not doing them. Oh, he's doing well, he's doing well. Big long legs, big big stride. But when, I, when I'm running on a treadmill, I've got short, choppy strides, I struggle. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> minute off, minute off. Right, well, done, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> good, good effort, that though, on, uh, on speed 17. We'll drop it now, we'll drop it. Uh, this is his second round, his first round, we're on um, level 17. 
Um, I, I'm running them at 17 and a half times five. His first round we're on 17, fantastic effort. Um, his second round is starting now. He's on level 16, we've dropped it to level 16. Um, same thing, 1K effort, a minute off. <laughs> good work, good work. Keep striding it out, keep striding it out. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, they'll get you. They'll get you. Shows a difference, doesn't it? Drop, 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 drop to 50. And this, is, and this is what I'm saying. Like, now, you know, I'm tr if we're in a game. Yeah, you're um, going to outrun me. I'm, 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 you know, the, the first effort, if you might, we might have been on a similar. Yeah. Similar, you know, but now this this is when I'm looking at you in a game yeah. and I'm seeing it. I'm thinking, right, I've got him now. I've got him, and I can keep that. I can keep that pace for, you know, 20, 25 minutes without yeah. without without breaking. Nice. Oh. Nice. <sighs> Minute off. Right, let's go. Three more efforts. Three more efforts, shower time. Would you say you're one of the more fair people in the team than doing this? Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm first or second in every, in every fitness session we do. Yeah. Oh, God. Right, we'll, um, we'll get through one more effort. We'll start on level 14 and give you a minute off. One more effort. So how many times a week will you do this then, sorry? Three. Three times a week. Three to four, depending on how long the week is and what I've done. Yeah. But yeah, I was, so, so in pre-season, I was getting, getting up, I was coming doing these efforts, yeah. go home, have something to eat. I'd come back, do a little bit of gym, go home, and then if I felt good, I might run a 5K at night as well. Wow. Right, okay. last, last effort. Last effort, I've give you... Um, I've give you a carrot and not one off for you because you've done you've done well. You've impressed me. Only 400, 400 meters left. 400 meters. Stick it. Last little bit. This is where you're talking about. You know your mental strength is now when everything's telling you to get off and stop. And this is in life as well when yeah. things are saying stop, get down. It's about staying up and getting through because. The thing is, there's 350 meters left here. If there are a million pound on line, and I'm going to say there's a million pound for you to stay on for 350 meters, you, you, you find the strength to stay on. Yeah. It's what it's what your pulling factor is to, to, to do things in life yeah. and, and what makes you tick. 300 meters, stay on here, stay on, stay on. It's going down nice and, nice and steady, it's going down. Keep talking to yourself, that mental battle, just keep talking to yourself. Last little bit that you'll, you'll do and then, and then we're done. 150 meters, here we go. Here we go, championship rounds now. Nice, good work, good work. Last little bit, last little bit. Yes, good work, good work. Great work, great work, great work. So you've gone through Brooks Bank, you know, you've performed really well. Um, what happened when you left school then, and where did where did the rugby league journey take you? Well, it wasn't until I, I'd say I were about fifteen, um, coming up to the last couple of you know couple of years in school, and then I started thinking, and I could make some out of this. Before that, I'll be totally honest with you, I never thought I was going to play professional rugby. I wanted to be an actor. Um, mm. Yeah, I loved I loved acting, loved drama at school. Um, and that's what I wanted to get involved in. And then it's a bit like you, you turn round to your mum and say you want to be, or a pilot, it were a pilot as well, but yeah. leading, up, leading up to 15, 16, there's not much you can put in place to help you be a pilot at such a young age. It's not like you can go start test driving planes at that age. So I was doing the acting, my mum, massive, like I say, African upbringing, the education side for her is just, massive it's it's that's what she wanted me to go down she couldn't believe that when she come over here you, you don't you don't pay for education she couldn't believe that people skived off school 
people, you know, kids in Swaziland love going to school and they, you have to pay for it. So your mum might say you can go Monday, Tuesday, I can't afford Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Do you think your mum's upbringing and the way your, your mum was, do you think that's had a, a massive effect on your discipline and your mindset and how you've been able to become the athlete that you have with her background and how she's implemented things into your life? 100% I give, I give, 90% of my credit to my mum. Uh, there's no way I'd be as mentally strong. She's the strongest woman I've ever come across. She had to, she's dealt with a lot through my life. Um, and she's just, she's just got a single minded to keep going. And, you know, she's never let us uh, see her hurt in. And obviously now as I've got older, I've realised the thing that she's had, things that she's had to deal with in her life because I'm older now and I understand what mortgages are, I understand what what death is, I understand what what um, destruction it, it, it bestows on your life. Yeah. I can look back now and think, wow, how did you keep it all together back then when all that were going on? Yeah. Um, so yeah, she's so strong. And then not just to deal with all that that were going on, but to bring up kids and. What she did was she'd never let us get away with not being man well mannered, polite, um, you know, not going to school. And it's easy for a parent you can you can forgive a parent for letting children get away with certain stuff like manners and being polite and opening doors because it's like oh, I'm going through I'm going through all this like if they don't say please and thank you it's least of my worries. But she never did and it was just something at the top of her list and it's made me the man I am today for for sure. Yeah, amazing, amazing. It's it's. Funny, I was having a conversation the other day that you don't realise how much your parents do for you until you become a, of a certain age. Um, and I think about all the things that I took for granted as a kid and now I look back and think, actually, wow, like, I'm, again, very fortunate and lucky to have the upbringing that I had and the parents that, you know, ground into me manners and being polite and opening doors. And you take it for granted as a kid. It's not, I don't think until you get older you actually realise how lucky you are to have those figures in your life and how much of an impact they have on who you are and, and the person that you become today. It's, I think, you know, I've not actually told them yet, but you know, mm. you want to sit down and, and almost say thank you really, don't you? Yeah, you should, you should tell them. I, I tell my mum a lot yeah. uh, what she's done for me and it's refreshing speaking to my mum because still to this day she doesn't have a clue about rugby. She does <laughs> not have a clue. Um, she still thinks I'm playing down at Siddle. She just knows I'm getting paid a little bit more. <laughs> um, she, she, you know, she comes to games, she's shouting, she, she's saying, oh, she, you know, sometimes I come off and she's like, oh, you dropped that ball today. And I says, I says, yeah, I know. And she's like, don't do that. You shouldn't drop it. And I'm like, mom, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to drop, do you know what I mean? But it's just refreshing speaking to somebody that yeah. doesn't, and you know, yeah. my mum makes my, uh, what I say my mum does for me is she makes my life very simple mm. and mm. it's it's refreshing speaking to her. And yeah, I can't, I can't um, thank her enough for what she's done for me yeah. um, as a person, as a man as well. Yeah, and you, you spoke about obviously going through a difficult time. Is that something you want to talk about? You know? um, well, I, um, I lost my dad at eight years old. Um, I were eight years old when I lost him. Um, obviously, my mum lost her husband. That were tough. It were tough that um, I felt like, do you know when you say your parents love you, but I was my dad's firstborn boy, he, he took me everywhere. They want a place where he went there, where I didn't go. And I felt like almost one of his mates. I want his son or one of yeah. his mates. And I know how much he loved me. And then, for for him to pass away, he, he died of cancer at the age of forty. Um, yeah, was like right. no, it, it were it, it's it's fine. It was it was a tough period, and this is what I'm saying about my mom in that situation because I can remember a little a little thing of um, when he passed away. Then obviously I were at school. Um, you know, my dad passed away. It was a tough time for us, and I can remember like a report coming back from school, and that it wasn't too good. And uh, I was playing up because I was playing on the fact, you know, my dad had just passed away and she said, she turned around and I can remember another child in my in my uh, class, same thing happened and a mo his mum made excuses for him and were like, oh, and I can remember it and it was fine at the time and I tried to get away with it, you know, answering teachers back, storming out, um, you know, saying, oh, I'm, I'm hard done to, I'm hard done by, do you know what I mean? You've got your dad, blah, 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 whatever I was, I was getting up to. And I can remember her just sitting me down and saying, there's no way 
that you're using your dad's name to disgrace uh, your behaviour and to disgrace the name of the family. She says you need to get over it. Um, you need to. Um, it's her. It's her. We're all hurting. I'm not going out and, and screaming and shouting at people. I've got a job to do. I've still got to go to work. Um, you've got to go to school. You've got to be right with people. You can't be short tempered because you've had something go wrong in your life. And that is something that sticks in my head. And it was such a like short conversation, but. It completely changed my, my my life because if I'd have gone down that path of blaming everybody else for everything, and I'd have gone down that path of you know I'm hard done to, I'm hard done by, I'd have never been where I am today. And for my mum to be going through that kind of stuff, um, and still make sure that she had the strength to say no, you're not getting away with speaking to people like that. You're not getting away with fighting because you you're angry because that's happened to you. It's happened. It's happened to us all. It's um, it's a horrible thing to happen, but you still need to be a good person and you can't use your dad to blame that on being a bad person. You can see how that, how your mum being with you through that period of your life has transferred into the man that you are today. Becoming accountable for your actions is a very like, it's a big thing, it's like a lift, a big lift off your chest, like owning up to your actions and being accountable by far makes you a much better person. But to see now, obviously, growing up without your dad and you having that mum figure right there, I can see why you're the captain of these rhinos. I can see why that's moulded you into the man that you are today and to have the mindset that you have to lead a team. And not just any team, like Leeds Rhinos is, is one of the best teams in Super League. So, again, I can I can see why you've got such a special relationship with your mum for bringing you up like that. And, like I said, credit to your mum for that. Yeah. Sounds like an amazing lady. No, she is. She is. Mm. Right, so what we're going to do now, it's, um, it's probably the bit of, about rugby league that, that fans and people don't see. It's a little bit behind closed doors of, we call this wrestle. And uh, what you try to do in a rugby match is you're always trying to, you're trying to pick the speed up of the game, pick the speed up, and, and your opposition is trying to slow you down. That's why we do all the wrestle of getting in, taking them onto the back, because obviously for you to get up from your back, it takes longer than if you land on your elbows and knees to get up and play the ball. Like the conditioning side of wrestling, what we'd do is it'd be me versus you. It'd be on knees and it's the first no ball. It's the first one to the back, yeah. losers. So you'd be on knees with clap hands and then it'd be go. And then it, whoever, whoever, get, whoever goes onto the back first loses. It's trying to get the, the under arm, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. What, so, so what I'm trying to do is from, from, if I get in this position, yeah. it's a strong position for me to, yeah. then, to then turn. Yeah. So it is all about technique. Obviously, you're a bigger bloke. You've got a big, bigger, wider base. So I've got to, again, the fitness side of it for me is sometimes it, when I'm wrestling against somebody I'll, uh, that's bigger than I know, he's stronger, but I've got a better engine. I'll have to keep, like, keep, just keep away from you until you get tired a little bit, just, and then I can spin you. So we'll go. We'll go 20 seconds, right? <laughs> me versus you. <laughs> got this, right? All right, let's go. From there, that's it. Use the escapes we were talking about. See how I'm giving you no space? Yeah. You see there's no space? <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's what, as soon as I start to give you space, that's where you start to pop. Yeah. So when I'm on you, I'm using my shoulders, I'm using my levers, I'm using everything to try and block off any switch it feels. So first of all, you're thinking about, God, I need to get him away from me, his head away, instead of thinking about popping your hips and... Yeah, and yeah. Do you know what I mean? Big shoulder in your face, the last thing you think about. Is exactly, yeah. exactly. But um, yeah, that's a little bit of wrestle. <laughs> no worries. So, you've gone through the adversity of losing your dad. You've got this powerful figure of your mum. How, how did it transfer from then going from Brooks Bank, not knowing whether you wanted to be an actor, a pilot, a rugby league player? What then confirmed your decision that you then wanted to be a rugby league player? and? And who did you sign for, and, and how did that progress? Well, um, then what what happened was at fifteen years of, uh, years, eight, years of age, um, I signed at Warrington, and that were like that were a big thing to sign because all the Halifax based players would sign for Huddersfield, Leeds, they signed for Yorkshire teams. For me to go over to Lancashire. It were almost like there were scouts coming over from Lancashire to what they normally watch around their area. They picked me to go over there. So 
you know, my mates that I were in school with had all had Huddersfield tracksuits on, Leeds tracksuits on, Bradford tracksuits on. I had a Warrington one on. And that were like a bit of a different thing for me to think, right, well, I could have signed for Huddersfield, Bradford and Leeds, but I got Warrington as well. So they were looking at me. They obviously see something in me. Mm -hmm. And to walk around with a tracksuit <laughs> on at that age, a young lad, and you've got a Super League tracksuit on, and I thought... I'm, I'm one, I was one step closer to, to becoming a professional rugby league player. That were like my a bit of a bit of a dangling carrot of you know I'm I'm I'm, I'm in the system now. It's not I'm not going home saying to my mom, mom, I want to be a professional rugby league player, and I'm nowhere near. I'm not even getting in Siddle's team because then that's like it's like going home and telling your mom you want to be a magician. It's a bit like oh, yeah. right, brilliant, but you know yeah. what what please just go get an education mm. whereas i'd got the tracksuit i were i were playing for warrington i were in the system or like i had an argument then mm. it was still an argument don't get me wrong <laughs> uh, i had one but it, it was still an argument and she was like no no way what did um, you what made you want to so you i can imagine at the time you know you had offers from a few different clubs what made you want to go to warrington i think it was the fact of getting out of my comfort zone yeah. going where i had to meet new people that I'd, i've never met before going where there were not one other player coming from siddle to go there uh, you know all my mates were at Huddersfield, bradford lead like i said they'd all, all my siddle team all my school team had signed for local teams yeah. i wanted to just be different mm -hmm. i wanted to be different and go and try you know it were it were, it were a big travel out at 15 year, uh, years old to, to travel to Warrington three times a week or whatever were, were, it were a bit of travel. And I can imagine doing that though like the first thing you said then is taking yourself out of your comfort zone and I'm, I'm a big believer that the only way that you grow and get better as a person is pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and doing things that potentially might not work out but doing it anyway because you know if it doesn't then the lessons that you'll learn are far greater than if you didn't try at all. 100% I'm a massive believer in that and I've lived my life like that every time I feel comfortable every time I feel like oh I've 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 um I've got the ingredients here I know what it is what it takes to to do this I want to move on then and stretch myself because even if it's stuff like buying an house you know you you, you buy an house at for round figure say 100 grand and then 200 grand and three and it's like I want to keep stretching and all of a sudden you know you you might get to a point where you can't afford to live in a million pound house, but then you have to downsize to an 800 grand house and it feels better than having a, having a house paid off, you know, in three years at 200 grand. You, you, you've, you've made all that ground up and then you, you, some, one day you will turn around and say, it's just one step too far for me that. Yeah. But at least you've made all that ground up and got to somewhere where you can look back and think, I've done, I've done myself justice there. That's, that's yeah. the best I could have done. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? I know I feel like we're quite similar in the sense that you know, the profession is different, but the mindset is similar in terms of we're always striving for more. And, you know, you're always looking for that next thing. And I know a couple of years ago, when I, I first met Amy, I wrote my goals down for the year. And I wrote my goals down this year. And two years later, you look and you think, you know, like, I've actually done so much in the last two years. But every single day you wake up, you don't actually realise until like a, a bit down the line and you look back and you think, fucking hell, like, yeah, yeah. I've done a lot in the last two years and, and I can imagine it's been similar for you. If you'd, if you'd have said at 16 years old, 10 years later, you're going to be the captain of Leeds Rhinos, you probably wouldn't have believed it. No. But um, now you sat here in that position and, and you look back and you think, actually, I've achieved a hell of a lot in there in the last 10 years. No. But you still strive for more. Yeah, you do, you do. And I think it's a good way to live your life and... <clears throat> Just going back to the, the point that you made about being comfortable and not, not improving, I got to a stage where I'd been playing Super League now for seven, eight years. I started young at 17. I'd been in Uddisfield's system. Um, I'd worked my way up, got a squad number of 31, went down to 28 and then got to 14 and then got to nine. The, the, the nine is the shirt. You How know. old were you when you got to number nine? Um, 21, 22. So I was still young yeah, 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 um, yeah. and I got the nine shirt and then I was like, right, um, I, was buzz I was buzzing with that because it was like, I've got the starting shirt, this is it now, I've, I've almost, I've made it, it felt like I'd made it. But then I played in nine shirt at Uddersfield for three or four years, um, everyone would say, right, you're brilliant, you've cemented your spot now, you're stupid to leave. 
and Lee, Lee Drynos come along and I thought, brilliant, and, I'd have had, and I had to fight for my shirt again. And people were like, why would you go to another club that's bigger where you have to fight for your shirt when you've got your, your nine cemented here? It's because of what we spoke about, about being comfortable. And mm -hmm. I know that then if I'd have stayed for another five years, I would have had no growth in me as a yeah. person, as a player. Um, I'd have had no growth. I, it were, it were, I were comfortable. Mm -hmm. Whereas going to Leeds, and then it spiralled out again, like, you know, I got I got the nine shirt there, um, you know, won a challenge cup, got made captain, and then that's the that's the that's the next like but you know, notches on um as it goes up and that's what you constantly try to do. And if I'd have stayed at Uddisfield, I could have never been captain of Leeds Rhinos, you know what I mean? I could have so that it was a risk. It was a risk going there because I could have gone there and not got a nine shirt and I could have not get played. Three years of my career that I've signed there, I'm, I'm second second choice. I'm not getting the exposure on TV. I'm not getting the exposure of the minutes playing week in, week out. I'm having to fight for my position and your career goes downhill. But lucky for me, I took that leap and it went up for me. And that, and that's I've never made a decision to go into an uncomfortable place and regretted it after. Yeah, 100%. <coughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Like by doing those things and putting yourself in those uncomfortable positions, at the time you don't want to do it, but then you look back after and you think, I'm so glad that I did that. So what's next then? What's next for Cruz Lehman? You obviously we're speaking now about getting comfortable and then making yourself uncomfortable to grow. What is your next step in life, your next goal that you think is gonna put yourself in that uncomfortable position, but you know that it's gonna benefit you in the long run? Well, in terms of rugby league, um, there's one thing of I want you know to cement myself in an England England shirt. I got a taste of it last year. I made my England debut, got my first cap. Another step up, um, and I want to now be a, a name that's that's regular mentioned in that England squad. I think that's the that's the next progression in terms of rugby league wise for me I've, I've played super league now i've played in big game big finals grand final i've captained the team to a grand final um you know i want to play well for leeds that's that's that then ultimately gets me in an england shirt and then i want to play well for england but in terms of life for me going forward i'm a massive believer i need to be really careful around th th there is a, an argument for chasing goals and it, it's fa it's fantastic but if you chase too many, you end up getting none. It's, I've, I, I, I've seen a quote and it said, um, if you're chasing two rabbits, you'll catch none. If you chase one at once, you'll, you're more likely to catch it. And that's why I mean about being careful. I'd love to, I've been approached about um, making, you know, a foundation in, in Africa of rugby league and oh, trying really? to get talent uh, from, from Africa. And it, it were a passing conversation. It's something that I'm passionate about, um, something that I'd love to put my name to. Um, you know, getting, getting, because um, there's some great athletes over there that that would benefit. We'd benefit over here having them in in our sport and uh, having them in rugby league. But I am very cautious of, like I say, putting t my eggs in too many too many baskets. And I need e e rugby league and professional sport as a whole is such um, a ruthless environment. If you take your eye off ball for two three minutes, you end up getting stung for it. And I don't want that to happen. Um, but I am I am also conscious of, you know, I'm in the later stages of my career now. Um, I'm still nowhere near finished or I've still got nine, ten years left of, of top top flight rugby. But th there does need to be a sort of what is coming after and that is something that I'd, I'd love to get involved in. But at the minute, my sole focus is on playing the best I possibly can for Leeds and and doors open up that way anyway if I'm playing for England every week I'm playing for Leeds every week I'm uh, I'm playing really well I'm on Sky and I'm getting man at matches doors will open for me for after rugby anyway but yeah I'm really conscious of uh, chasing two rabbits at the same time yeah I love that and uh, I can't agree with you more um, I think I've, I've had the uh, mistake in the past of trying to do too much at once just because you know you feel like you want to be doing everything but then like you said, chase two rabbits, you get none. Chase one, you get it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've made that mistake before, so it's, it's a good it's a good conversation to have by not spreading yourself too thin. There's a fine line, isn't there, be between having goals and having ambitions and stepping out of your comfort zone, but then having too much going on 
and then you don't achieve anything at all. Yeah. So I think it's really important to, to talk about that and, and yeah. Um, I think the conversation we've had has been brilliant. I know, and it was interesting just before we said don't don't talk about the questions but I think the questions we've asked has led to an amazing conversation and I've learned things about you that I never knew um, so thank you mate I really appreciate it um, is there anything else that you, uh, you want to discuss today or should we leave it at that no um, thank, thanks for having me it's been a good day I've enjoyed training you you, you, you know you don't um you beat yourself up a little bit about your fitness and stuff and you just say you're a bodybuilder. But <laughs> but no, I thought you, you impressed me, mate. You did, you did really well and uh, I've enjoyed it. I hope I hope the people that watch it have got got a little bit of something from it. And um, yeah, you, you know where I am if you need me again. Thank you, mate. I really appreciate it. No worries. Cheers.